Hi everyone, my name is Steve. Today we're going to go through this lead code question. 1525, number of good ways to split a string. Let's take a look at the question first. You're given a string S, a split is called good. If you can split S into two non-empty strings, P and Q, where its concatenation is equal to S, and the number of distinct letters in P and Q are the same. The first condition is kind of trivial. If you split these two and then you later concatenate these two substrings, it should be equal to S. The second condition is the number of distinct letters in P and Q are the same. So the numbers of distinct characters in these two substrings, non-empty substrings, should be equal. If there's a, such a split, it's called a good split. So it's asking us to return the number of total good splits that we can make in S. For example, let's take a look at a few examples. A, A, C, A, B, A, this given string could be split in five ways. These are the five ways. So basically you can put a delimiter or just cut this string into two parts from index one, two, three, four, five up to the last index, right? So we cut it off here. So we got two non-empty substrings, A, A, C, A, B, A. Apparently, this is not a good split because this substring contains one distinct character and this one contains three. Okay, similarly, we can do all of these splits and only these two are considered good splits because this substring contains two distinct characters A and C. This one contains two distinct characters A and B. So does this one, contains two and contains two. All of the others, they are not good splits. All right. One of the constraints is S contains only lowercase English letters, so only 26 letters. Second constraint is the given length of the is the length of the given string. All right. This is a very straightforward problem. So we need to figure out all of the possible splits. That's number one. Number two, of all of these possible splits, we need to do the math to see how many of the splits are actually good. That's just how we're going to approach this. So how we're going to count the splits is very straightforward. We can maintain two windows. One window is counting the, the number of distinct characters of the left substring, and the other window or the other char array is to count the number of distinct characters in the right substring. And along the way, we always keep checking whenever these two substrings, the number of distinct characters in these two substrings are equal, then we'll increment the result by one. In the end, we'll just return the result. That's it. Very straightforward. Now let's put the idea into the actual code. First, we'll initialize a variable we'll call it good splits. Good, good splits, zero. Next, we can initialize two, we can initialize two arrays. These two arrays will be the size of 26 because the, one of the strings, one of the constraints is as contains only lowercase English letters. So that's good. This is for the left side, and we need another one for the right side. All right, now we'll just initialize the right side because in the very beginning, i equals to zero. We we'll just start from everything. The entire string is the right string. The left string is just empty. We'll just consider it that way. So we'll initialize the right string. i is equal to zero. i smaller than s length i plus plus. Then we have, we'll just use, to make it simpler to read, char at, at i. Now we'll just accumulate the frequencies of this character on the right substring. All right, C. In the beginning, when we initialize these two given strings, every single character's is frequency is always zero. Now, whenever we encounter one, we we'll just increment it by one. All right. Now we have initialized the right substring. Now we can start iterating through from the index zero all the way up to s.length minus one. All right, now let's go through this. We initialize i to be zero again, and now we have this for loop to go through i plus plus. Now what we need to check is first, we'll still initialize, we'll get this character first. And now what we need to do, we need to increment the left side character count by one, which is left C A plus plus. We increment the frequency of these characters on the left side by one. And also at the same time, what we need to do is that we need to increment, we need to decrement this one 
on the right substring by one because we are moving the pointer towards the right, which means we are losing this one on the right substring, but we are including this character that we're iterating on to the left substring. That's why we need to decrement this on the right substring. And then what we can do is that we'll go through, at this point we can check whether the two substrings contain the equal number of distinct characters. Okay, now let's have, we'll call it distinct char on the left. And then I can quickly write a small for loop, get distinct left, and then get distinct char on the right. On the right. It's kind of verbose, but it's at least it's very descriptive and meaningful, easy to understand. I'll implement that method in just a few seconds. Uh, now, what we can do is we'll check if the distinct number of characters on the left equals to the distinct number of characters on the right. If that is the case, that is what we want. We can do good splits plus plus. That is a good split. So we'll increment good splits by one. In the end, we'll just return good splits. That's it. Now let me quickly implement this one. How we can implement this? Very straightforward. I'll call it count. If int c. I'll just call it count. For int i. We'll just loop through this for loop. If i not equal to 0 we we'll just uh, increment C. In the end, we'll just return C. This is showing if this number, so uh, don't worry, this is a for loop, it's actually a constant number because this the entire length of this for loop is only 26, right? It's like, very constant, it's very minimal time, so don't worry about this for loop. It doesn't add up too much time at all. When we loop through this for loop, whenever the i is not equal to zero, which means we do have such a character in this right or left substring, which means we can we have a distinct character. So we'll just increment c by one. The, the maximum of c is just 20, 26, right? So this substring has all 26 characters, regardless how many times they might appear. So this is the c that we're going to return. So we call this one for both left and right substrings. We can get the distinct number of characters for both left and right substrings, and then we compare if these two are equal. If that is equal, which means this is a good split by definition of this problem. Now let's hit submit and see. Huh, something wrong. Cannot find symbol. Oh, here, typo. Length. All right, submit again. All right, accept it. Um, this is the solution, a uh, quick solution to this problem. Time complexity wise, it is O n. n is the length of this given string, which could go up to 10 to the power of 5. That is the time complexity. Space complexity is constant. Although we initialized two arrays, these two arrays are a very minimal size, which is only 26. It's similar to constant, O1. That's what I would consider it. So, but you, of course you can put it as O26. That's correct as well, to be more precise. But 21 equals to one in big O notation. I hope that makes sense. If this video helps you understand this problem, just do me a favor, please hit the like button. That's going to help a lot with the YouTube algorithm. And feel free to share, like, comment this video among with your classmates, friends, colleagues. I would really appreciate it. And also don't forget to subscribe to my channel as I have accumulated quite a few lead code tutorials and other data structures and algorithm problems on my channel. So hopefully I'll just see you guys in just a few short seconds. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it.